smells like discipline, Batman. Tiki here, and uh, man, oh man, we've been doing a lot of hard work going through Batman the Animated Series for my first time, for my inaugural watch. Dragon's been guiding me through it, but you know what, Dragon? I think this time around, why don't we just, uh, why don't we stop, have a refresher, kick back, relax, and take a nice cold drink of Harlequinade? What do you think, Dragon? Well, you see, folks, uh, I, I think that <laughs> that sounds like a plan. See, folks, long ago, I made a bad HK take in the ways of Batman the Animated Series, serving as his spirit guide to Gotham in a way. And tonight, raise a glass. Indeed, we are having a drink of Harlequinade. All right. Dragon, I had a plan with that one. It didn't go quite so smoothly, but yeah, I don't know. I, I had a plan with it. I was like, yeah, let's, let's make this a pit stop. You know, it's... I feel like we could use a cold drink. I don't know if you're more offended by the uh, by my flubbing of the intro or by my holy. Just by it all, really. Just all of it. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. dear. Oh, boy. Anyway. All right. So, Dragon, uh, I can actually take over the, uh, the credits this time around because it's a very memorable duo. This episode, of course, is written by the wonderful Paul Dini and directed by the great Achua, Mr. Kevin Altieri. That it is. That it is. Of course, uh, Kevin Altieri, uh, the, uh, you know, of course, had done uh, you know, Two Face uh, very, very memorably. Of course, kind of the definitely one of the one of the two parter specialists for sure. Also, Demon's Quest, speaking of the other two-parter, again, very memorably. Again, I love Demon's Quest as well as Two-Face. So uh, we have uh, masterful Kevin O'Teary in the chair, and, of course, Paul Dini, having, you know, of course, created Harley Quinn, as well as, uh, just to give you a few credits of Harley Quinn up to this point, you know, Laughing Fish, Harley and Ivy, and Trial, most recently. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, Dragon, I guess, uh, I guess with my opinion of this episode... I think it's very, very, very fun. I think this is a great showcase for the Harley Quinn character, for how much of a contradiction she is, for how frustrating she can be to work with, but then how kind of shockingly useful she can be at the same time. And boiling all that down, Dragon, I guess my main issue is probably with the ending, but I guess maybe the point of the ending is to be frustrated with it. So I can't exactly say they didn't do their job, you know. The the point of the ending is like, oh, come on, Harley, after all that. <laughs> so, I don't know. It, it was a fun romp, Dragon, a very fun romp. <laughs> and certainly, certainly, uh, to redeem my holy here, Dragon, this is certainly a w way, way, way better Batman and Harley Quinn team up than that movie that shall not be mentioned. Right. So, um, a little bit of a little bit of context uh, then. A little bit of extra context. So this was a uh, studio working. This was Dong Yang, of course. You know they had done uh, you know, Laughing Fish, almost got him. Joker's favorite trial again. Very much kind of a definitely the go-to Harley studio, which very appropriately fits this. So, um, so basically, this is kind of the episode where uh, this is very much a Harley Quinn episode. Very much Harley Quinn focused. You know, very much kind of like, that's why we get an ending like we do in this episode, because it's a Harley episode, not a Batman episode. Sure, sure. <laughs> this is basically their excuse to kind of like develop Harley Quinn as a character, uh, you know, through kind of this fun buddy adventure. Um, of course, this is the basis of, uh, you know, Batman and Harley Quinn from uh, 2017. Which, of course, uh, again, I remember going through that thing and kept hyping up Harley Quinn throughout that conversation, because basically now you, like, now you see this the is... Yeah, yeah, this is the this is the way better Batman and Harley Quinn dragon. Absolutely, in yeah, twenty minutes they did. Yeah. In twenty minutes they did way more than that movie could do in an hour and twenty minutes. Oh yeah, and of course you notice the big difference. The reason things that kind of torpedo they had they had Bruce Tim involved in Harley Har, you know Batman and Harley Quinn, but no Deanie. You need Deanie to yeah. make it work. Yeah, That's got him. <laughs> they had the aesthetic. But not the words. No Dini. They threw a rock at him, Dragon. Dini was the rock. Yes. 
So of course, a uh, big thing here. I can never, I can't pinpoint the dates exactly, but it sounds like uh, so. Okay, so uh, there's a reference in here to uh, Harley's origin. Now, again, something we've been tracking for the couple up for this in trial. Uh, have been the first time we have uh, we've referenced the fact that Harley Quinn used to be a doctor, used to be Joker's sure. doctor. So uh, at this time, so Mad Love is a comic before it's an episode of the animated series. It's a comic. It won a lot of awards, and then they animated it once they got to the new adventures of Batman, the, the, you know, the revamp. So at this time, uh, basically, I don't know. I can't pinpoint what comes first because the comic comes out December of '93, and then it gets all the awards in '94. And this episode is in '94. And again, that animation usually takes like six to nine months. Usually nine months. Ooh, I'm just trying yeah, to that is a that is a stickler of a chicken in an egg situation. <laughs> so my point is, I like to think with Trial also kind of in the fray, the point being, like, uh, Deanie is, is talking over the idea of, okay, well, we need to address where Harley comes from. He's probably talking over Bruce Timm, sure. and they kind of get the light bulb moment, either working on Trial or this episode. And they're, I want to say simultaneously they're fleshing it out. Like, they had the idea, okay, well, Harley was Joker's doctor, and what, what would that story look like? Then they're making the comic maybe while they're also kind of doing what they can in the show before they can really fully, you know, you know, show up before they figured out that story. So I want to say they're kind of simultaneously being figured out to ultimately it, it's kind of fully figured out then adapted uh, within the animated series. Makes sense. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it in terms of all the uh, kind of the background bona fides of it all. So let's, I mean, we should, we should probably hit the title card though. The title card is done by Eric Radomski and uh, Ronnie Del Carmen. Of course, Ronnie Del Carmen, a uh, big guy at Pixar these days. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful artist, story uh, story man extraordinaire. Also, is the storyboard artist for the ages. Oh yeah. All right. So we start the episode off at an auction dragon, but not just any auction. It's an auction for an atomic bomb. Where's Bane when you need him, folks? <laughs> yes. Seriously, where's Bane? He's, he it seems out of character that he's not here, Dragon. You know, you joke about that, but just give it a couple episodes. You're gonna get your. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so the, the mob's holding kind of this black market auction. The dealers, you know, kind of taking the bids and everything. Starting the bid, starting bid at one million. They're like, if up, it goes up to five million. Guys, don't insult me. <laughs> You know, don't tell me the man who walks out of this with these nickel and dime bids, again, million, five million dollars being a nickel bid, essentially. So the man who walks, and this is the, this is the line that seals his fate. The man who walks out of here with this walks out with Gotham in his pocket. Of course, it leads to, oh my God, he only has like three dialogue scenes in the whole episode, but they're so Can I do, it? Can I do it? I don't know, Tiki. I don't I've got not... written down word for word. <sighs> Fine. He's... Fine. <laughs> How about nothing? Zero. Zip. Zilch. Nada. My personal check for Bupkis. Drawn from the First National Bank of Squadu. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joker, uh... It was One of Joker. the all-time great Joker lines. Absolutely, just again, just the way Joker's kind of coming in there. Of course, yeah, I love how he throws the you know the playing card, you know, as as his check. My personal check for Bubkiss, drawn on the First National Bank of Squadu. <laughs> <I'm laughs> Squadu. <laughs> uh, that's it's just it's just gold. It's the way Joker. The minute that uh, you know, Joker like enters, it's dragon. It's fun to say. Yes, yeah, so it is a little bit like ugly. Squadu. Squadu. <laughs> So the point being, uh, you know, the uh, the guns are drawn on the Joker. I love that he enters and he already immediately owns the room as the Joker tends to do. And of course, this is Dini writing to a T, man. This is Dini. This is what Dini says. This feels, uh, I feel like this could have been some, you know, a little bit of a Dark Knight pool, too. I mean, I know obviously, uh, obviously this came way before Dark Knight. I'm saying, like, this feels like, uh, feels like the uh, Dark Knight intro scene. You know, him just kind of, like, coming in and instantly owning the room. Of course, of course. And again, very much kind of pulling from the best of. And we do know Nolan has seen the animated series. Otherwise, we know this for a fact because of John Dagg in Dark Knight Rises. He's seen, he's seen the animated series. <laughs> so, um, 
So let's see. Um, all right. So then, of course, Joker, of course, with that, you'll notice Joker's wearing a top hat while he is surrounded by guns, which is a little, is a wee bit unusual. Of course, the Joker does, he, he accessorizes lethally, as as we learned about the Joker. Of course, look at his, his, his grenade line jack in the Dark Knight. The man accessorizes, of course, the acid squirt flower. So he removes his top hat. I love that. I love the expressions the anime, Dong Yang outdid themselves on the Joker animation. I think Joker's never, this is like the on model season three Joker, like that. He, he looks, this is the best one of the best looking Joker episodes in terms of his animation, his facial acting. It looks great. He's perfectly on model. I love it. <clears throat> so Joker, of course, like, sorry, boys, this lot is sold. Of course, as he removes his hat, he scares everyone away because he's got like a classic cartoony bomb with a fuse under his <laughs> under his hat. <laughs> everyone runs for the hills, and the dealer is just kind of left like you know, fledgling. Oh god, oh god. And of course, Joker basically had an awesome pose of Joker holding the bomb in his hands, like it was like. Uh, uh, uh kind of look tosses the bomb and like the guy's like he, he catches the bomb which why does it catch the bomb but again i guess hopefully it doesn't go off and of course boom but not exactly so it's more like uh, subtract one letter it's less boom, or <laughs> boo it's a little it's a gag bomb initially you think it's a little accordion like little jack-in-the-box bomb boo you really should loosen up dealer have a laugh now and then. Of course, when the Joker says have a laugh now and then, you should run while you can or run to a doctor because... The the dragon, Joker... My God, I, I still can't get over how disturbing the use of the laughing gas is in this series in particular. Oh, they yeah. really outdo themselves. I want to say this is, again... This looks... I mean, it looks genuinely painful, Dragon. That's the difference. Yeah, no, this is the third time we've ever Jokerized somebody in the animated series. Well, I mean, third... Uh, Third episode slash film uh -huh. done in Phantasm very memorably with uh, with kind of less it's less you know basically it's you know uh, Arthur Reeves of course when he becomes Joker eyes just laughing and of course he could he could die laughing if he's not careful if he doesn't calm down which is terrifying then of course uh, Laughing Fish where we have people victims get scratched by the cat or you know get basically you know get hit with the you know the, the two binary compound they're they're you know like the, the famous Batman j being Joker eyes when it's a guy in the bat costume. Now this poor schlub with, like, the yellow eyes and the yellow teeth. It just, they keep making it scarier. It's different and scary each time. That's what I love about it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, of course, in some respects, it's a little worse than death. In some respects, because this guy, as we know him from Phantasm, this guy's going to have some rehab ahead of him. It's going to be terrible. <laughs> I swear to you, TG, for the anniversary of the Joker this year, they put out this uh, this comic and had a bunch of stories. And Scott Snyder did a story where basically it's a story about the aftermath of the, of the Joker talks. And you can imagine what Snyder would do with the Joker. Toxin aftermath. Oh, yeah. Oh, you man. can just imagine. <laughs> All right. That's so much more pleasant, says the Joker says. And of course, the idea of Joker stealing that bomb. And of course, we cut to the aftermath. The dealer being carted off uh, with you know, Gordon on the radio talking to the mayor. He basically uh, he wants the mayor to evacuate the city. He claims uh, the mayor then is, is rationalizing, Mayor Hill rationalizing. You know, like, we, we on just. I can't evacuate 10 million people on the suspicion of a bomb that we, we and we don't know the bombs even in Gotham, which obviously is BS rationale. But again, if you look in the scene, Joker glove. So I think, you know, if you're okay, the smart you know, if, I'm just saying, uh, I'm going to keep this running joke going, Dragon. If Bane had the bomb, you goddamn know that he'd show it off and we would know that he had the bomb. It make things so much more simple. True. All right. I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> right, you're, you're, you're on thin ice, mister. I'm just going to let you know that. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> right, so again, I love like we see the Joker's hand. It's like it's a great clue that I mean, obviously, if you're really stuck in the episode, you may or may not see it. But by the same token, it's like right there, so you know something's off. It's like you know, the Joker. It's like the white glove and like those little sleeve of, of purple. It's just great. So it's a bad omen, regardless. And the mayor is either being really stupid or he's being strong armed by the Joker, which is a great kind of clue for what happens later in the episode. As like okay, that's that's how Harley puts it together later. Right? Uh huh. So then we have a Batman Gordon scene, really well staged, and again, really snappily done, because again, it's not a Batman episode, it's a Harley episode, so we really gotta economize it, so we have Batman and Shadow. Just on this is essentially, like, the whole thesis of the episode, like, why we get these two together, and it's like, yeah, you're right, it is very, uh, it's very economic in its screen time, it's just like, okay, we need to, uh, either figure out what the Joker's motive is, or recruit someone who does. 
Yep, which then leads to the comedy cutting. And the editing in this, on the rewatch, it's like the editing's just so flawless and so so point. It, it's just so pointed and wonderful. Again, there's like gag editing. It's 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 fantastic. Right? But it's like I need a plan so crazy it just might work. Cut to Harley in her cell, <laughs> chewing her bubble gum upside down. Ha 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 ha! Playing with a little doll, and then Batman enters. And of course, then Ar- this is Arlene Sorkin's episode. Is her, I believe her favorite episode as well. Arlene Sorkin. Uh, uh, yeah, she. Uh, oh my God! Like, I, I think this and Harley and I are probably her favorite episodes. Uh-huh. She, uh, she, she got a big kick out of this, and of course, Deanie very much modeled Arlene Sorkin. Basically, Harley is Arlene Sorkin, pretty much, just basically in a jester costume. So uh, a lot of fun there. So anyway, so feels like a lot of improvs in the episode, which it might be. So Batman enters. She swallows her gum and like, don't you knock before entering a lady's boudoir. <laughs> Again, there's that Deanie dialogue, man. No one writes, no one writes your creations better than the creator himself. I love this wordplay here, where Batman's like, "I need help," and she instantly goes to like, "Well, you're in the right place. I recommend a lobotomy." I don't know. I, I, I just think there's something really inherently funny of like, no, you're right. It is, her, it, it, her it thinking is, that Batman's going to her for therapy. This really snappy dialogue, too. I recommend it a lot. I mean, of course, her being previously a doctor at Arkham, it makes perfect sense. She would know exactly where that is. She's it's like she, she's got a lay of the land in there, knowing where the lobotomy room was. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Joker, uh, so basically, Batman outlines the stakes of the episode. Joker's stolen a bomb. And that this city and everyone in it's going to go up in a mushroom cloud unless I get to it in time. Mm-hmm. So she refuses to turn her t- turn the squealer on Mister J as she as she says, and Batman says, "You know, I got uh, you know, Gordon and Doctor Barthol or Commissioner Gordon, Doctor Bartholomew. I have them. Uh, basically, I have this I have this uh, deal put in place here. You know, they 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 say hey, they're, they're your ticket out of here. Basically, if you help me and promise no double cross, you can get out of here." Which is like, "Yay!" But no double cross. Aw, sure, take all take all, that all the fun out of life. Yeah. So, Dragon. Yeah. We some kind of suicide squad. Anyway, so uh, as point you know, Batman, he's like, okay, she's not taking this. I have no no time for jokes. He's playing hardball with her. He's just like, hey, I probably. <laughs> I, I promise, I promise, and they shake, and they, like, she forces, like, a handshake, and just Batman, basically, this is where they set the, the, the stage of, okay, straight man, comedian, uh, buddy dynamic right now, where she's, like, raising the hand, and they're, like, a victory pose, like, she won a boxing match or something, like, oh, the irony of it, the grim stalwart dark knight and his greatest female adversary, together, working together to save the city, doing the victory pose, cut to those hands in cuffs. In <laughs> Great cut. Editing, Such a yeah. lack of trust, two voices. Oh boy. So uh, basically, uh, Batman's asking Robin if uh, Gordon's got any leads. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead here. So Robin checks in. Basically, he's yeah. waiting in the wings for trouble. Uh, basically, he's really only helping you know, babysit Zippy there. He's like, okay, look, just, just you know, stay, stand by, essentially, is what Batman says. You know, keep tabs. I'll, I'll let you know once we. Let me know if anything happens with the mayor or the, or the commissioner, if they learn anything, right. essentially. So Harley and then Pen- Harley, uh, Harley slips out of her handcuffs, just basically like she has a spare key or something. <laughs> well, no, she has. She picks the lock, basically, while Batman's distracted talking. Right, right. Robin, she, if you look, you can see her, like, she's picking the lock. I want to listen to the radio! Don't! I lo- Don't! Don't! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and basically, it's a very DD. It's like DD. Uh, it's like a DD moment, especially with their hair like that too. Because you know, we have Harley Quinn now with the. They finally figure out they want to give her like you know the uh, the was pigtails. Like is that what you have? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pigtails. Yeah. Yeah. Now, lean, basically, the mirror of the jester hat. That's why she has pigtails. Because in Harley and I, was the first time they showed her without the thing. She's always like a bun or like a, like a little ponytail. Anyway, so. Uh, I was in the radio, like, no, did you get him in the monitor? Anyway, so he's just like, oh, God. <laughs> then, of course, this, she hits oh, the I'm sorry, Greg, like, when you said Dee Dee, I, 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 thought you, I thought you were talking about Dee Dee Pickles for no. a moment, and yeah, that, that Dee Dee makes so much more That's sense. That's the thing, I mean, with the, with the, what do you think I was going for with the, with the pig tail? I had no idea, I really didn't. <laughs> anyway, so the point being, much like with the pig tails, just kind of the, uh, the very, uh, very devil may care with the buttons attitude, she's, she's pushing, uh, pushing buttons, which of course activates the parachute, which of course, a little bit of 60, 66 now. Gigi, get out of my laboratory. Yeah. 
So the, uh, so the parachute activates, cause all sorts of chaos, because now the Batmobile's steering out of control. Now we have a really P.O.'d Batman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, about fist off Conroy's in his, in his performance here. So he lays down the law, man. Again, it's done so much better here than it is in, in, in kind of the 2017 remake. Oh, yeah. Or the, you know, the quasi-continuation. Anyway, so now the buddy comedy team up begins here where he's saying, like, you know, listen, and listen good. You don't say anything. Do anything. Sorry, you don't touch anything, say anything, or do anything unless I tell you. Got it? Yes, sir. And she's just, isn't she, like, kind of, like, mimicking him as he's doing it, too? Right, no, right or after Or does that this. come late? That comes, okay. like, right after. So, basically, she's like, yes, sir. So, initially, then Ben's trying to fire back in the conversation. He's just going in. Basically, he's, just, now, now she's mocking him, like, while well, he's, right, like, right, he's right. turned all stoked. <laughs> he's like, I'm look, basically, that he's looking for the Joker's lair. Like, do you have any idea where the Joker would, would be kind of, like, you know, camping out after his, you know, his last escape and where he might keep the bomb? So she's mocking him like, and, and then where he looks at her, like, oh, okay, <laughs> just funny. <laughs> All right, so they go to, uh, oh god, what is it, Dragon? Some sort of prop warehouse or yeah, something? Yes, they're going to Joker's last hideout, which in this case is a funhouse uh, storage center, as as oh, Hulk calls nice. it, their ha their ha hacienda. Oh god. <laughs> All right, so Batman's just reminding her, no tricks. We had a deal, remember? Yeah, she's changing into something right. comfortable, i.e., you know, her, her iconic costume, which, again, David Ayer, take notes. Put him in the costume. Yeah, please. All right, so then we reveal that the Joker, man, he's got tabs on the whole city via v video monitors, man. There's a little subtle bit I really love in this scene. Uh, I've always kind of loved this little bit. So as, as we Joker has the closed circuit uh, cameras like all around Gotham, all the biggest places of influence. Basically, this is how Joker again scare like, kind of Scott Snydery and almost where Joker he knows what's going on in Gotham. He knows like yeah, he knows what's going on under your bed, man. Joker knows things. And this is like just a little inkling to how how Joker kind of gets to that place. Kind of how he pulls like his his like it's like the, because I'm Batman for the Joker. And it's because I'm the Joker. Uh -huh. Of course, uh, the bit that I love. So we see the ma importantly the mayor's office is empty. You know the little clue. Mm -hmm. the mayor is gone. And, and <laughs> this is the bit I love though. We then go to the jeep. I'm sure the mayor's just out for a swim, dragon. It's fine. Oh yeah, you're probably right about that. So we see the, <laughs> all the banks, and we have like you know the, the GCP, the empty mayor's office, and then my favorite. We have Jim Gordon's office, and I love how violated and pissed off Batman is. He's like he's always squinting, like those are my, you know, it's like those are my Batman Gordon scenes, darn it. Those are private. Those are <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dragon. He's pissed off specifically because of the Batman Gordon scenes. No, but seriously though, there is like. A, no, I hear you. I hear you. There is very much a violation of like, God damn it, that's my Gordon. You don't get to spy on Gordon. Yeah, yeah, and again, he's just so angry that, again, like, you know, Gordon's his friend, he's kind of being against the fact that Joker does have an, up, have an upper hand, and basically it's like he's right under Batman's nose, that's the thing that really ticks him off most, is the fact that, again, like, in the moments where I feel secure enough to put my trust in somebody, Joker's there watching me, that's how he's always one step ahead, and that really pisses Batman. It's such a great little moment, he seems squint, like, always oh, so angry once he sees Gordon's office is bugged, I love it. Alright, so then come the hyenas, dragon. Yes, Bud and Lou, named after Adam Casella. Great names, great names. <laughs> so, uh, unlike Ellie from The Last of Us Part 2, Batman does not uh, shoot the dogs. No, no, we've seen him punch dogs in the Dark Knight, though. <laughs> that's true, that's true. You know what's weird? Uh, that hyena's actually he basically feline. subdues the dogs, right? What? He basically subdues the dogs, right? He basically kind of, like, lets the dogs, you know, kind of, like, he basically like lets the dogs kind of do do whatever they he's want. He's at to their him. mercy he right now. It's like he's, he's kind of like he has an act decided like the you know the punch him because I like that we see the animated Batman like when he's fighting panthers and stuff and he has fought dogs before like you know he's not going for it. he doesn't want to hurt any animals because one stands presence would never allow him to do it. Secondly, he's a nice guy. <laughs> but no, that's that's the thing. It's uh, anyway. So the point being, like, also fun fact: the hyenas are more feline than dog apparently. Oh really? Huh? That's, it's a that's weird a fun thing. Point. That's the thing. I they look more dog. Like apparently they had like they, they descend. They do you like they descend from feline, or it's like the point is like like a feline DNA thing of some sort. They have more in common with, with cats than they do with. It, it's a weird. Anyway. Uh -huh. So um, anyway, I heard that somewhere. I don't know how how, how accurate. I'm pretty sure that's that's like a confirmed fact. Did you hear from John Favreau when he was directing the realism of the Jungle Book? No. I think you mean Sorry, the light. Sorry, that was me. Oh, 
yeah, I do mean the Lion King. I'm sorry. It's been a pointless reference on your end, sir. Anyway, so... <laughs> Right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so Harlow's in costume. She calls off the babies and we're saying, "Hey, the babies, mommy's home." And this is just the I, now you see the Birds of Prey origin. This is why she has a hyena in Birds of Prey. Of course, of course, sure. and Luke. And we've introduced them before. It's like giving like a proper duel like, instead of just like Joker happens to have hyenas and Man Who Kills Batman. But now it's like, okay, it's Harley's Harley opted for the hyenas. So clearly, they're more Harley's uh, <laughs> priority. <laughs> so what do you think of our ha hacienda and of course like saying yeah you have like you know wires basically you wired the whole city <clears throat> so as harley quinn uh feeds bud and lou like this giant uh, it's a bloody steak but also some bloody exposition it's a fucking flintstone steak dragon that's what it is sure so i love that basically so this is where batman this is where we finally get inside the harley quinn like why is she with the joker and I mean, this is where we're really breaching the origin issue here along with trials this is where we kind of really get in dialogue here batman's asking why the attraction, Quinn? Of course, big nod to Mad Love here, where it's like, you know, Mr. J, I, I spent all my days at Arkham listening to other people's problems. Mr. J was the first one, you know, who, who listened to me. <laughs> listened to my problems. And, uh, and then, of course, he made he made everything fun. And what, what about when he hurts people? And again, this is Batman being the excellent devil's advocate here. What about when he hurts people? Says, it's just the joke. I love, I always, lo I love that delivery because again, she's not thinking of the ramifications. Yeah, she's, she's very gone. hesitant about it. Yeah. But she's, I love how in that moment she's that far gone. Like, it's just the joke. She doesn't give it a second thought, but then Batman kind of, kind of, again, the dangling Chad, the hanging Chad here. I hope you're seeing this. This this perfectly symbolizes Harley Quinn and Joker's relationship with one line from the out, from someone from the outside giving her advice on it. I hope you're still laughing when it's you when it's your turn. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that is very much like put that in stone on their, uh, you know, on their commemorative, you know, whatever their relationship that that very much defines it for sure. Yeah, it's a big foreshadow right. for you know Harley and Harley and Joker in a nutshell for the whole dynamic there. Of course, uh, we main also this whole thing maintains Harley as an innocent, which is really important. We maintain her as an innocent, so you know, basically we can buy the save in the end as the audience. Sure. It's like basically Harley Quinn's you always care you kind of want to save you want to see her break away from the Joker in some cases we've seen it like the animated Harley Quinn show she's broken away from the Joker good for her she's gonna <laughs> make it on her own da, 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 da. anyway they should have just made the theme song of that show a parody of that yeah it would have been funny <laughs> <laughs> alright alright so now uh, let's see so they uh, they head to the um the Apex Novelty Factory. Uh, so then, basically, they're heading to the Apex Novelty Factory. They tell that Mr. J used to hang out there. They're telling Robin to meet him there, which is why he's going to show up later. Uh, and also, Batman bought Harley Quinn a candy apples to keep her quiet. I, I, I like that. I like that little detail. That's wonderful. <laughs> now, I heard that the genie said, like, they joked on, there was a commentary where, like, they joked that, hey, Harley, that Batman bought her a candy apple, which I'd like to think that's exactly what happened. Like, maybe she brought it for herself, but let's, let's just say Batman bought it for the Keeper Quiet. That, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's see. So then we have the grappling gag. Oh, boy, you know, Mel and me have grappling guns. Of course, Batman grapples up because, you know, they have to get to the top floor of the place. Harley Quinn says, I can manage myself, thank you. And, of course, very cartoony uh, bit here. She then pulls out her grappling gun, which sends his little jester's head on, which is the hook. Fires in the air and doesn't quite make it, so bonk, bonks her right on the head. There are a lot of cartoon <laughs> sound effects. Uh, when The animated series, they like to do some comedy episodes because uh, the Emmys ate up comedy episodes. Back Did they? That's the huh. thing. That's, they, they, in the animated series, they had a nickname for it. They called it Emmy Bait. They do an Emmy Bait episode. That's why I have cartoony sound effects like a fun Harley episode where they're trying to get the Emmy now because oh, Batman got overlooked because it was a serious show and the, it was a Saturday morning cartoon sometimes. Thankfully, there were exceptions like Heart of Ice, but you know how it goes. Oh. Okay. So then uh, like Harley's like, helped out by Batman lends her hand like mid-sense. Like, whoa! <laughs> Just going all the way up there. <laughs> Sneaking in there, I love the silhouettes, like you know the eyes and everything, which is great. Of course, Batman always cuts the, you know, always cuts the great silhouette. Harley Quinn, big old bug eyes in the in the shadows. Harley Quinn does make a really good silhouette as well, for sure. Yeah. All right, let's see. So uh, basically, they're sneaking around. Of course, uh, he says, "Shh." What do you mean, shush? This place is desert. No one's been here for years. And of course, Harley yet again has spoken. Too soon as we reveal Boxy Bennett and his hidden casino. <laughs> oh, God. Not just the, not just I, the hidden I casino. I love this setup, Dragon. It's so it, it's like 
such a speakeasy type design. Absolutely. Not just the hidden, like, you know, casino kind of speakeasy sort of operation. Full of mobsters. Armed mobsters. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like Batman just kind of stumbled into the wrong situation here. So before... And then, uh... So the distrust of the relationship of the Bond here. And again, you see where they're getting... Harley at. just instantly backstabs him, just knocks him out like, Hey, boys, look who I got! But again, in this case, he is she is kind of looking out for him here. But again, he Batman can't tell. This, this whole situation's going south as far as he sees it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what do I call it? Not, before Batman, I have no no doubt that Batman's going to fight off all of those guys before he can. But Harley just knocks him unconscious with an like uh-huh. that. So, again, Batman, you could argue a little out of character. But again, Harley's episode, so it's a, it's a pass. It's a, it's a get out of jail free card. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> All right, so Batman is now tied up on a roulette table, which is an awesome image, by the way. Batman's in a casino. Batman, like, we didn't, we never got that in '66. So let's let's see Batman kind of tied up on a, on a you know, <laughs> on a casino. Anyway, so he's at the mercy of Boxy Bennett, who was voiced by Dick Miller, the great and unfortunately now departed Dick Miller, who was in Mask of the Phantasm. He played Chucky Saw in Mask of the Phantasm. The first guy got killed, remember? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Bruce Tim loves Dick Miller, so of course I assume he's a Joe Dante fan, so maybe that's why. Anyway, it's a classic mobster voice with Dick Miller, which is just great. So uh, he's asking like Harley, "Hey, what are you doing with the bat?" And of course, Harley Quinn here, she's uh, she's kind of posing here, like, "Oh, you know, I love I love like the 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 staging of all this, like the guns like on in front of her eyes, and, like the eyes are going like like cross eyed to look at the gun." She pushes it, like, "Oh, Boxy, do you think?" I- you think I double? You think I'd work with the bat? No, no. I was just—it was all essentially saying it was all set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not with the bat because you guys would basically this is her making her case to Batman, hoping he's going to listen. Like, because if you if if you thought I was in league with the Batman, you'd shoot us all, wouldn't you? Just, yeah, <laughs> oh, God. You'd blow us away. Oh yeah, no, no, no doubt about that. Folks. Yeah. All right. So the guns are lowered, and then she's asking around about Mister J. Uh, and then he says he hasn't seen him, but, uh, but you know, Quinn, I've never, I've never understood why you would go for someone like him when there's, uh, nice looking gentlemanly types like me. And she's just like, I'll put in. Well, boxy, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Box, like, right, right, right. I know my pudding's a little temperamental, <laughs> but what, re- <laughs> what relationship isn't, you know, what relationship is, uh, is without their flaws. And of course that leads to, of course. The uh, musical section of our Batman episode. So Harley, again, the I'm, again, I don't mean to like throw the other ones of the bus here, but again, this is how you do the musical number. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like this is this is a lot of fun. I mean, I you know I, I'll still make the argument that maybe it goes on a touch too long, but my God, not nearly as long as uh, Batman Harley Quinn. To be fair, she is stalling, so you know it makes sense. I mean, that's true, that's true, and it is a good kind of, like, it is a good setup for, you know, we see, uh, we see, we see Robin and Batman kind of, like, get themselves into position, and also the, uh, the song itself, when you break down the lyrics, you want to break down some of the lyrics for the, yeah, just, uh, for the backstory? A, just a few of them, but also want to mention, yeah, yeah. you know, Harley, she's flipping to the stage, and, and that's the origin of this whole song sequence is that, you know, Paul Dean and Harley Sorkin, being the friends they were, living close, they would carpool to work, and when they did that, you know, she would, uh, I believe she was auditioning for something, and she was singing this song from, it's, called, it's a musical called Meet the People, and it's Say That We're Sweethearts. Again, this is an actual song. It's not just written for the thing. So all this, this, they didn't change a word of dialogue, I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. And she, so basically, she would sing this, and again, this is him like putting a lot of Arlene Sorkin in the character, and it's a very screwball comedy song that speaks perfectly to the abusive relationship <laughs> Of Harley and Joker, so that's <laughs> yeah, like, so basically Harley spots Robin. So says, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on stage and I'm gonna distract him with a musical number while Robin saves saves Batman's bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. All right, so we have this great screwball number. We have some great lyrics like uh, you know it's uh, it used to be so placid. Uh, won't you please put down that acid? <laughs> I got to admit, Dragon, with uh, with lines with lines about acid and stuff like that, I'm kind of shocked that this wasn't written directly for Harley Quinn and the I Joker. I know it's crazy, right? But that <laughs> all, like, again, they didn't change a line of dialogue. <laughs> Would you push me off the roof? Uh, I I feel our romance is dead. Yes, 
I thought you were aloof, and then you pushed me off. Right, right, and right. And I love with that line. So this line, here's the thing that's so great. Again, completely coincidental, but just how much mileage they got out of it. Of course, big thing with Harley and Joker, like him pushing her out of things, especially roofs and high places. So again, that very much speaks to their relationship perfectly. And Batman, he hits his head, this is before Robin says it, he hits his, he hits his head against the table, just giving his commentary, like, oh, God, I hate this song. Just like, bam. He <laughs> bashes his head on the table, like, oh, like, how is she so blind? <laughs> she's, she's still with that guy. <laughs> oh, boy. So again, there's basically a really excellent song choice. Anyways, as it's going on, Robin is freeing Batman. And, of course, you know, Harley's, you know, they're eating it up. They're, uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're digging their performance. They're completely. Well, that was a little, little animation thing. You'll notice the piano player is missing legs. He doesn't have any legs in this scene. <laughs> Oh yikes! No, now that I now that I notice it, I can't unnotice it. Thanks, Dragon. Yeah, well, like a little thing. It's like it's piano player. Who cares? <laughs> he's not walking God. out of here. He's just he's just sitting on the. You know, he's not going to get up the thing. Anyway, <laughs> it's like one of. The, wait, actually, he does walk out. He does run out when when Batman starts attacking. All right, well, fine. Yeah. Like he literally like magically grows a pair of legs and runs away. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, it's, it's the little, it's the little things, and again, it's it's a gimme prize, like a filmation thing. It didn't have like sure, no sure. legs. Oh right. god! So let's see. So and of course, they have this great boost. Now Batman and Robin are, are free, and of course, in silhouette, they then walk up the boxy after the performance. They're all clapping for Harley's taps boxy on the shoulder, and then bam! It's like a double punch from the dynamic duo. Awesome. <laughs> So basically, you know, like Batman's grabbing Harlan, they're dodging Tommy gun fire, and Robin's coming in for the save by pulling down like a giant, uh, you know, giant uh, wheel, um, stuff like that, like punching guys in the slot machines, that sort of stuff. So then uh, Harlan, of course, basically now they're running outside the place, like Batman holding. <laughs> the two of them have like running with Harley in their arms, and like Harley like, doing like she's like a kid, just like bam, boom, like just like still fighting oh, in mid air, like, just like kid. Like, <laughs> it's hysterical. Like a kid who drank way too much soda after seeing a Rush Hour movie in the 90s. Sure, sure. And like during the sequence... I know that's oddly specific, but you know what I'm talking about. Right. Also, again, like during the sequence, like she's dropping a chandelier on the guy. Like she's like, Harley's having a great time in this scene. And then she's like being like, you know, kicking and punching as she's being dragged out. Like, I was having fun! Like, like, get out of here. All right. Let's see. Uh, oh, I just love the little... It's a little animation thing, Dragon, but I just love the little fist pump she does in the air when she's going back to the Batmobile. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, she's still, like, an actor. It's like a you miss it thing, but it's just, like, she's so hyped, Dragon. She's, she's on a roll. Pow, bam, back girl, eat your heart out. <laughs> of course, Robin's asking kind of, the, again, the fun question. Again, a little bit of backstory question. You're like, what was she before she went bonkers? A clinical psychiatrist figures <laughs> so let's see so robin uh, gives a little exposition here that uh, there's still nowhere with the joker and the mayor uh, won't evac evacuate the city uh, and then harley just suddenly she gets the joke she gets like she understands joker's plan here so big kind of there's a big 48 hours kind of revelation moment here like oh god this is the yes we understand the plan now so of course oh, she knocks on batman's a little wood sound effect <laughs> like you know like well, knocks on his head there um what better way to tie up <laughs> What better way to tie up the cops and then and then and every in the mayor than tie up the mayor literally? So you know she was okay. It's basically Joker's. He's he's economized everything to get him. Yeah. Which then leads to the great reveal of the mayor. Take us through. <laughs> sure. Um, first of all, I just uh, let, let's just give it up for Joker's swim outfit, Dragon. Yeah, I knew you're gonna like this because you love when the Joker's in a theatrical costume. Oh yeah. So this whole third act for me is great. <laughs> oh yeah. So you have Joker like in so like, he's, little pool he's got like this striped like this striped uh, purple and blue forties baby swim out with of course like a ducky uh, a ducky inflatable tube around his body a little rubber floaty yeah and of course he's he's he's, he's living up in the pool <laughs> as the mayor is just tied up and helpless so Batman and Robin are scoping all this out now now we've he's helpless this. he's down for the count and he's drowning in it. Anyway. I love you. 
Anyway, so uh, Batman and Robin, they're, they're scoping out the mayor's house uh, as, as they put him in the pool. Now the mayor is being put in the pool. It's like another death trap to kind of ensure that the mayor, the mayor ain't going gonna, gonna to warn anybody. <laughs> of course, like Harley's bragging, do I know how Mr. J thinks or what? And here you thought I was uh, this, uh, some, some bubble-headed blonde bimbo. Well, joke's on you. I'm not really blonde. <laughs> All right, so uh, Batman cuffs Harley to, uh, oh, God, I love that she he cuffs her with bat cuffs mm-hmm. to, the, uh, to, to the gear shift of the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. Of course, <laughs> he, they can't risk her warning Mr. J, which, again, was a good call, because ultimately we know what happens. <laughs> just, would I do a thing like that? Which, of course, she's then, like, in, interrupted by the thing coming down, like, eh! She's left in the car. I love she's like a spoiled kid left in the car. It's adorable. <laughs> you just can't. Tr- you, just, you just can't trust some people. Of course, the second she says that, she slips out of the glove, out of, out of her glove in her costume. She has like a, a second glove just in case this happens, and she's messing with. I Bob. like that the second glove is the opposite color. That's a nice touch. It is. It is. <laughs> So let's see. So then, okay, now Joker's telling off. Uh, Joker's telling off uh, by the moon. Nothing like a moonlight dip, wouldn't you say, Mr. Mayor? And of course, the Mayor Hills is like, what? he's asking, them, just ask for your ransom, okay? Like, obviously, he doesn't want the city blown. Just ask for your ransom. We put an end to this. And then Joker ain't Penguin, Mayor Hill. I'm going to tell you that now. I know you're used to the Penguin crashing your parties and everything, but listen, the Joker does not operate. Does not operate like the penguin. Does not do a ransom. I love how Joe's like throwing the towel on on Hamilton's head. Oh, I know that that Hamilton is down for the count and drowning. Oh, for dragon. T- anyway, I'm sorry. It's the truth. Anyway, so then we have this this, this excellent Joker line from uh, from the Joker's excellent Dini written line, which again perfectly. This is like great plan for the Joker. It makes perfect sense. It's everything doing right by the characters. It's like. Instead of taking taking down you, sorry, take, instead of taking you, the cops, and the Batman down separately, I'm going to blast you all at once. This is classic Joker plan. That 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 so long as he takes out Batman and doesn't go before him, so as long as Joker doesn't die before Batman does, he's good with blowing everything up, even if he goes with it, even if there's a chance he's going to go with it. Which is just that that's Joker to a T. Dini gets the character, man. It's flawless. Oh, yeah. So then he calls for the plane. Uh, All right, boys, bring the plane. We're blowing town. Literally. And of course, Mayor Hill is panicking. But all those innocent people. And then yet another perfect Joker line. Some joke on them, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate punchline. Which, again, that's how you frame this plan. It's perfect for Joker. Oh, yeah. For sure. For taken sure. by surprise. I think it's a ransom. Ain't a ransom. It's death. <laughs> so then he t- as he says he then tips Hamilton into the pool because he's tied to a chair he's gonna die so Batman then uh, tosses a batarang at- oh this is great Joker's walking away I love this shot but Batman tosses a batarang we do the POV shot of the batarang flying and bam hits Joker right in the head awesome and he falls Robin dies in the safe hill uh, then we have like some some fun action here, like you know the Joker's trying to attack Batman with an umbrella. Never has an umbrella looked more threatening, Dragon. Well, I mean we had to have the Penguin some other episodes, but it is threatening. I'm just saying. Well, the Penguin is like this is just a regular umbrella, all right? This isn't like a, an umbrella with a gun. This is just like an average like here. I'm just going to randomly take this umbrella and use it as a melee weapon, and it is quite effective in yeah. the in the short term. Well, the Batman just grabs him, he slams Joker into a tree, like, boom! Like, oh, yeah, great <laughs> action. Now you think, okay, episode's over, right? Nope, we got more time, so here's what happens. So then Batman just gets stapled out of the blue here. He gets stapled to a tree with one hand, and Bat- Robin is then bowled by by an unseen by unseen force, and then we reveal uh, they, they've been you know, stapled and bowled by this by a crowd suppression device from the Batmobile, the, you know, the Bola staple launcher. Gee, it's amazing what you find in people's glove compartments. Yep, so Joker is surprised to see Harley. I love what Mark Hamill's doing here in the performance. He's, like, he's, he's working with like, the surprise, just kind of rolling with it, because he had no intention of getting Harley, and we, the audience, can probably put that together. He had no uh-huh. intention of getting her. But he's like, how the, he's just more surprised than he is like, impressed. Like, how did you How did you escape, you clever little minx? How did you escape Arkham? And of course, we were, you know, she's, she's telling 
his own Joker. Like, I made a deal with Batman. <laughs> I made a deal with Batman. He locked me up in the car. Oh. <laughs> God, that's what you were saying about like the spoiled kid who gets locked in the car for five minutes trekking. Exactly, <laughs> and also I love this is a great gag where uh, she turns uh, like you know Batman locked me up in his, in his little car, and of course as as she turns her little pom pom on her hat gets stuck in the Joker's eyes. Oh God, <laughs> seriously, it, it's so funny. It's like it's, I love this like, inside like it's a little comedy sound effect, but still like it's not just like an accident of animation. It's like that's so it's so funny anyway. So, but the deal's off because no one ever said anything about hurting my Mr. J. Because in the minute the Joker got hurt, it's like that was like, okay, that tears it, the deal's over. I didn't, I didn't want him to get hurt. And of course, he probably intended this the whole time. It was going to lead to an altercation. Like, I'll lead him to it, maybe get, get, get free. But if he, if he sets up, if it comes in and setting off the bomb and everything, then, then it, it you know, kind of devolves into chaos, obviously. <laughs> All right, so they, uh, they're about to board the plane to, uh, you know, romantically get away just in time. But then uh, Robin points out, like, gee, Harley, you're lucky you were here. I don't know if you if he would have had time to come back for you. Yeah, because there's a 10-minute countdown. And Joker's just like, shut up, you little brat. And this is a clever little foreshadow of Mad Love. Basically, in the Mad Love strategy, it's like, basically, if you're in a helpless situation within the Harley and Joker romance, the only way you're getting out of it is playing the strategy and tearing down the relationship. That's like, you know, just like suggesting that like, something's a little amiss here, Harley. Mm. All right, so uh, you were going to come back for me, weren't you, put in? Of course, Joker's just, he's trying. He's just like, oh, of course, pumpkin pie. It's just like, well... Here you are, so uh, save I don't have me to the trip. trip. <laughs> so again, he's just he's just, he's just going with it. okay. Like again, it's like you're really he would be fun with leaving Harley there, but if he can take her, he's gonna try. <laughs> so then, of course, uh, and Bat, so again, Bat and Robin here double, you know, kind of questioning the relationship with very valid points about the, how convenient all of it is, and then, of course, Batman coming. What about those things? You know, your 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 baby, you know, <laughs> my babies. What about your? Pets? I'll buy you a goldfish. <laughs> just shoves and of course I love the violence in the relationship she's like just shoving her head back in the thing like like why are you little and of course like now she's getting antsy he's like trying to sue the spoiled child right now and of course now it's just it's it's <laughs> and she kicks him in the face like no because no like she ain't leaving the babies behind she cares about those aims man right and this leads to uh just a freaking wonderful costume change Yep, so Joker. Joker, so Joker's like, okay, he's giving up on the on like getting Harley along for the ride. And he's, I love how quick this is too. He like, climbs up the climbs up the plane, his old like World War One biplane. <laughs> it's just like it's great cartoon logic. There's absolutely no way he'd actually be able to change that fast, but it it just visually looks great. It's flawless. And again, you need logic. He's the Joker. I mean, it's it's like the whole he's Batman logic. You can get away with it. <laughs> so Joker and like he's dressed like Snoopy. You know, basically it's like Snoopy. He's dressed like a World War One flying ace. <laughs> so now he's, he's in the bomber. So anyway, so he takes off, and of course, uh, before he before he before the bomb goes off, he definitely he wants to take Batman with him just just for the heck because he's there and like yeah why not if the if the plane and everything this is working out perfectly for me, Harley uh, you know she's um, Harley you know she's going to save Batman by trying to remove the staple and, and everything and Batman's like not it's like she's just airing out her relationship uh, her relationship stuff here like. Basically, we're very remorseful of, of, of everything. Batman just doesn't. You know, me. Batman. I hate to say it, but I think he's not the right guy for me. <laughs> of course, Batman's like, he's like, well, basically, she gets thrown off as one staple gets off, and I was just like trying to pull on the other, I'm like, oh, stop with your relationship nonsense. Like, gonna get out of this thing. The bomb's gonna go off. <laughs> All right, let's see. So then, uh, so as basically as Batman is now free, Joker's coming in with. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Joker's dropping bombs, literally. He's dropping bombs from, from the from the old bomber plane on him. It's like it's it's chaos everywhere. Batman's free just at the last second. Of course, it looks like, oh I got him. And of course he then looks and uh, we reveal, nope, they're alive. They Batman they, they ducked it at the last second, they're all good. <laughs> so let's see. So uh they're uh Batman and Robin are disarming the countdown. Meanwhile, Joker wants to go around again. Go around! But boss, oh, 
on, man. Of course, they, they, this is again classic Joker. He then turns the uh, he turns the machine gun on them, threatening them as he would do. It's like, okay, yes, sir. Of course, that bomb's I'm going so hardly off. kind of a. Uh... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. He's like, that bomb's going off. Even if I go with it, basically, he's going to go around and make sure. Even if it looks like they disarmed the bomb, he's going to like fire on the bomb until it blows up, which is again psychotic. But again, classic. So long as he goes out with Batman, he's a happy clown. And then, gosh darn it, Dragon uh, Harley, she's going to make a stand, man. She's going to put that grappling hook to good use. Yep, she has the money shot here. She fires the grappling hook. Uh, laugh this off, pudding. <laughs> so it hits Joker again, very cartoon. This is Emmy logic here. But let's just go with it. So it hits Joker on the head, uh, knocks him out. Uh, they, they, he falls backwards after a little comedy take, and then basically the machine guns going wild. And it's like going around like the the, the, men, the henchmen are like ducking, like ah. It was basically the wild machine gun fires. He's spinning around like with wanton damage. Like Mayor Hill's like ducking and everything. It's hysterical. And of course, they just the fires. He's just firing in the air now. <laughs> The plane crashes right in the Hills Mansion. And then uh, you think, okay, well, Joker's dead. Clearly he's dead, but again, Joker and again, Harley Quinn episode. Joker just walks out of it, doing a little comedy stumble here, just stumbling, and the parachute goes off as he falls off the staircase. <laughs> so then he comes to with Harley pointing a machine gun at him. And this is a, this is a great moment, but also... <laughs> it's a honeymoon or something, but it's also a great moment. So... Um, Pointing the machine gun at him, and Joker's playing his mind games. Like, you know, it starts off like a serious moment. Like, he's mine, Bats. Like, Batman, Robin, or Toner, stop. He's mine, Bats. And I love, like, Batman just, like, he's just so out of character. It's wonderful. It's like, he just, like, gives up. Like, okay, well, it's out of our hands now. Like, wait, what? Yeah, 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 you're right. I did notice that. <laughs> but again, it's like, if it, end, if it ended any other way, it, you know, it might be a problem. But it's, anyway, so. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so Joker then plays his mind games and again the abusive relationship thing comes back you wouldn't dare you don't have the guts and of course Harley then cocks the gun and the machine gun I love that and this I love the acting here and the, the facial animation is flawless here you see her start to cry a little weak and you feel like oh poor Harley Quinn again it's like the element of the character you want to save that poor Harley Quinn in this bad relationship but then she gets the term and not in a million years and of course then really tense bit she cocks the gun Batman and Robin I love that Batman and Robin gas like oh it's like oh so mm -hmm. she pulls the trigger and then rat tat tat little bang flag kind of comes out the other end. Then we have the honeymooners ending here where it's like this little, all these cartoony like loon oh, yeah, like, totally, like, totally reactions. <laughs> like you know, like the he -he -he, basically as like, <laughs> she's like Joe was giving like a wise like, wait a minute, and of course she looks at the gun like, Oh, I thought it was supposed to shoot him and they're like, Hey, am I in trouble? The I am am I in trouble look is hysterical. <laughs> and Tiggy, what is Joker's response to this? Oh god, I'm sorry, I don't have the the, the line per se, but yeah. he basically is just like go, go ahead. Of course you got the whole the whole auction scene, but not the baby! You're the greatest. Alright, I'm sorry, you're right. That that is a pretty damn good line to go out on. Maybe you're the greatest okay. if they embrace little honeymoon or stuff. Of course, I have this hysterical cut to Batman and Robin shrugging like, I don't know. <laughs> Why <laughs> not? This, the episode literally didn't know where it was going to end. It's like, well, I mean, this is the cop. This is the, how, this is the way Harley went in. So it's like, well, we're just kind of left on the side. Here's Batman and Robin's like, oh, <laughs> it's over. I mean, the bomb didn't go. I don't, I don't know. know. Of course, and I think the idea too of the whole way is like Joker's impressed. You were gonna kill me, oh, ain't you? So we get the fact you were gonna go that that's far. nice. That's, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. Joker's touched. That's why he's like led by guns and guns. Like, oh, like baby, you're the greatest. You were gonna. God, he's so proud of her for almost killing him. So Ben Robin shrug. <laughs> they we iris out in like a little heart shape, and that's the episode. All right. So, final thoughts, Dragon. Uh, I like it quite a bit. I think it's got a ton of energy, a ton of jokes. It's almost like a Looney Tunes episode in some ways. Um, I do think the episode is funny and random and just a wee bit frustrating, but in an intentional sort of way. So, just all in all, in all just a really good time, uh, a good character piece. You know, a lot of subtle character development built into the, uh, the silliness of it all. And my God, it just, I'm sorry, it just really puts that, that upper movie, just really puts that to shame, really does. 
Yeah, so uh, final thoughts for me. Again, a very key Harley Quinn episode. This really, in retrospect, this really maps out the character's destiny in many respects. This is the episode that proves, okay, like, not only is she a popular character in the show, she got her own episode, and where can we go from here? Like, this showcased the fun of the character and kind of a further exploration of Mad Love. Again, the thing I kind of, I can't say definitively that Mad Love wasn't in the works during this episode, but uh, my point being, it, it gets a conversation going at the very least, that maybe it leads to the episode, maybe it further develops well, we established the Doctor thing. Where can we go with this? And we've seen, we, had, we did the Doctor thing. We've seen the, the interesting layers to the relationship. And where can we push this further? That's kind of like the track that it goes. It kind of builds for itself here. It's, it's you know, it's it's got the screwball comedy angle that, uh, you know, that that, that works. Uh, it's, it's basically the screwball comedy angle works if everyone's in character but aware of the situation. Like, obviously, there's playing it straight, but then there's also playing it straight but self-aware. And I think this episode found the proper balance of that. It's uh, It proves the buddy movie pairing can work. Uh, however, uh, <laughs> admittedly, it can get a little tricky with the ending. As we kind of saw here, it's kind of like, oh, we got to have to shrug our shoulders. We have no ending. We have no out. But it was fun, though. I mean, that's the thing. It's like... As fun as this episode is, uh, you know, you kind of run out of you run out of juice by the end. But you, if you roll with it, you can it can be an earned moment. This was an earned moment with that ending, which is just great. Building blocks sure. of Harley Quinn that we have today. You know, Paul Dini, in fact, did pitch a spinoff Harley Quinn show with Harley and Ivy. And I mean, it got this episode kind of gets the foot in the door for that. And you know, years and years later, Harley Quinn animated show, which also heavily features Ivy. So it all, it's all relative, folks. It's all relative, and maybe tracked this episode. Who knows? It's a, it's a great episode. It's a fun episode. It's it, it, it's the Harley episode, man. It's the Harley episode. All right, Dragon, why don't you give us a little tease of the next one? Time for a sequel. Revenge. Reignited. Time travel. In a flash. Ken, Batman, and Robin. Quail the temper of Time Bandit Temple Fugit? Or will the Clock King reign victorious? Tune in next time to find out. Same animated bad time, same animated bad place. On the next visit to the animated bat cave with Time Out of Joint. Squadoo!